Whitman. How are you today? You are good. You are feeling good today. Is it time for another story? <gasps> okay, so what story are we reading this time? <gasps> oh, that is a very good story, Simon. Will we show everyone at home what story we are reading? Okay, let's show everyone together. So today's story is The Dragon Stewardworm. So let's read the story together. The Dragon Stewardworm was the very first and the very worst dragon ever to exist from the beginning of time. It was absolutely ginormous and almost completely covered Scotland from the top to the bottom and all the way across from side to side. Soon after the dragon Stuart Worm arrived in Scotland, it had eaten whole herds of sheep, drunk dry most of the locks and half burned half the crops with long flickers of flame that shot out of its mouth. It promised to stop if it could have just one delicious young person to eat every day, starting with the king's daughter, the princess Jem de Lovely. The king was very upset. He announced that he would give his sword, his kingdom and the hand of his daughter in marriage to anyone who could free Scotland from the dragon Stuartworm. Princess Jem de Lovely said, Papa, the sword and the kingdom are yours to give, but my hand belongs to me. I will choose the person I marry. Many warriors came to the king to inquire about his sword and his kingdom, and after that, about the princess, Jem de Lovely. They went to do battle with the dragon Stuartworm, but they never came back. Sometimes a stirrup or helmet was found, which the dragon Stuartworm had spat out on the shores of the loch. Although Princess Jem de Lovely was sad for these warriors, none of them had touched her heart. Then one day, a boy called Espato wandered along the road. Espato was a bit different from the warriors who rushed around fighting. He liked to sing and sit by the fire making up stories. He was walking and singing by the castle when Princess Jem de Lovely looked from her window and thought, Aha! A spatel glanced up and saw the Princess Jem de Lovely. He thought, Aha! A spatel went into the castle and said to the king, I've seen a girl in your tower who has an honest, interesting look. I'd like to talk with her and share my stories. Princess Jem de Lovely stepped from behind a curtain where she'd been listening and said, I'd like to meet you too. A spato held out his hand and Princess Jem de Lovely took it in her own. Hold on a minute, said the king. First, Scotland has to be saved from the dragon Stuartworm. Whoever does that may marry the Princess Jem de Lovely. Well, said Espato. The princess, Jem de Lovely, should marry whom she chooses. But, he turned to the princess, would it be best to get rid of the Stuartworm before we chat about our favourite stories? That would be very helpful, said Princess Jem de Lovely. Early next morning, Princess Jem de Lovely and Espato crept into a tiny boat on the loch near where the dragon Stuartworm was sleeping. When the Stuartworm awoke, it opened its great jaws, yawned mightily and took in a huge drink. The tiny boat was swept along as the loch water rushed into its vast mouth. Princess Jem de Lovely and Espato rowed as fast as they were able, past the sharp teeth, over the dreadful tongue and down the throat of the monster. 
They hung on as the boat was battered every which way until finally they reached the stour worm's stomach. Princess Jem de Lovely held the boat steady as a spattle took a knife and dug a hole in the flesh of the stour worm. Next, Princess Jem de Lovely opened a jar containing a glowing peat that they had taken from the fire in the castle. They blew on the peat, not once, not twice, but three times, to make it blaze like a live coal. Then they rammed the peat deep into the hole in the stomach of the stew worm. Very soon the fire from the peat began to hurt the stew worm. As it got hotter and hotter, the stew worm started to roll and rather. The more its stomach burned, the more it howled. It screeched and screamed, then tried to get rid of the burning in its belly by gagging and spewing. And so all the water in the tiny boat with Princess Jem de Lovely and a spattle in it flowed out of the stormworm's mouth and back into the loch. As the little boat heaved about, a spattle stood up. Princess Jem de Lovely handed him the king's sword and a spattle scalped the stewardum the most tremendous blow on the side of its head. A spattle struck with such force that the stewardum was sent rocketing into the sky. A spattle kissed Princess Jem de Lovely three times and asked if she'd marry him. Princess Jem de Lovely kissed a spattle seven times and decided that she would. And so they lived long and happily together in the country of Scotland. And what became of the dragon Stewardum? Well, a spattle gave its head such a clatter that its teeth flew out. They splashed down all around Scotland, forming islands and rocks. The Sturmwell's body went north, landing with a terrific thud near the top of the world. The sea hissed and boiled for a while, but then the cold Arctic Ocean froze over the gigantic lump, and it is now called the country Iceland. Every so often an enormous belch of smoke and fire bursts from the earth there. Some people say that this is a volcano erupting, but it is really the dragon stewardum snoring in its sleep. And that is the end of the story. That was a brilliant story, Steinman. What a terrific adventure. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today, but I can't wait for our next story together. Bye, everybody. <laughs>